Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. A few months ago, I uploaded a video called 20 OSRS items you must always have. The video has been performing quite well, and as I was brainstorming a new month of content, I thought, well, why not do the exact opposite? In today's video, we will go over 15 items or set of items, which are either completely useless and could quite literally fall under the category of noob traps, and items that are not recommended to have unless they are the absolute last upgrade you need for a specific combat style. If this video is helpful, I would be extremely grateful if you subscribe with notifications on, drop a cheeky like, and you could even become a channel member to further support this project and receive a ton of cool perks in the videos and in the live streams. The only two disclaimers I have for this video is that all of these items fall under the category of combat, and like I said before, they are either useless or should be delayed as much as possible when purchasing upgrades. For noob traps, you will see the PK skull icon next to them, and for the ones I recommend you upgrade last, you will see a timer icon next to them, and I will tell you when I recommend getting them. The second one is that, like I said before, I'm not your dad, so you could always give these items a try if you want to switch it up, but all of these items won't really make too much sense when you look at them closer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. We are going to start with melee, and the first item you should completely avoid is the Blessed Ceredomen Sword. You obtain this item by combining a Ceredomen Steer with a Ceredomen Sword. The tier can be bought from the Last Man Standing shop, and when put together you'll be able to use it for 10,000 hits before it fully degrades, leaving you with the tier so you can feed it another Ceredomen Sword. The reason why this item is not really worth it is because, well, nobody likes charged items. And two, because needing 70 attack to use, we have much better alternatives to train attack, strength and defense. The Abyssal Whip and Dagger are cheaper and won't degrade at all. The Abyssal Bludgeon, although a little more expensive, is also not going to degrade whatsoever. And you can sell it back whenever you're done with it, no strings attached. This item is definitely common to see, and I guess the only reason why it's relatively expensive is that people have much better use for the LMS points to sell other items on the Grand Exchange. The next item you should avoid is the Garazzi Rapier. Up until the Tombs of a Mascot, this was a staple item to take to your Slayer trips. Although expensive, the 4 tick stab weapon was great in terms of DPS. The high price point was because of where it came from, the Theater of Blood. Being a high-end item coming from a raid, the Rapier had always been a must-have item for melee. I say up until the release of TOA because of the following. In the beginning, the Osmumptum's Fang was extremely expensive, just like every new item coming from a raid. I remember selling my rapier for a shocking 200 million GP to be able to afford the new big boy stab weapon for 365 million GP. Now, don't worry, I'm talking literal days after it released, but nowadays, and as of the time of making this video, the rapier sits at 46 million GP, while the fang costs nearly 20 million less at 27 mil. Not only is it cheaper and stronger, and with a pretty cool special attack, it's a must-have item for the Tombs of a Mascot and a few bosses, making it more versatile than the previous Stabby Boy. The first item which falls in the category of late upgrades is the Bando's Chestplate. Now, like I said before, this does not mean that you shouldn't get one, but like we say in the gear progression video, up until the point where your next melee upgrade is a Torva, a Vernic Defender, an Ultor Ring, a Bando's Chestplate should definitely be one of your last purchases to look like an account that's about to enter the late game. Not only is it extremely expensive because the God Wars dungeon items have always been profitable, but because you needed to break it down into Bandos components to repair Torva armor. The obvious alternative for the Bandos chestplate is a fighter torso. Some of you may rather drop over 30 million GP than having to spend more than 5 minutes with absolute randoms at Barbarian Assault. But my tip for this is the following. You might as well grind for all level 5 rolls in this mind-numbing activity to also be done with the Elite Candor and Diaries. Make sure to put that extra cash to good use on other melee upgrades, or even buyable skills just to increase a few easy levels. In the same category, we have the Avernic Defender. This item also comes from the Theater of Blood, and unlike the Garazzi Rapier which you can sell when you're done with it, the Avernic Defender Hilt is a permanent upgrade for your account, and you won't see those 90 million GP back at any point. It is difficult to think that the Hilt is now more expensive than the Garazzi Rapier, but that was not the case at one point because this item was the cheapest one to get, excluding just this year armor. The Avernic Defender increases your offensive stats by 5 each, and gets a plus a 2 strength bonus compared to the Dragon Defender. This is one of the last items in your melee gear progression, because the price point doesn't really justify the stats. And like I said before, that money is better used on other items, and most importantly on some skills if they still need some love for an important milestone. Don't be afraid of rocking the Dragon Defender up until you're ready to drop big money on your Best in Slot shield item for melee. And speaking of Best in Slot, the next set of items is Torva Armor. Here is where things get a little silly, as full Torva set costs 1.1 billion GP as of the time of making this video. 
these three items should be your absolute last upgrade in terms of combat. And I'm not only talking about the melee style, like in the entire road to max gear for all three combat styles, including special attack weapons. This means that you should get things like a Twisted Bow, Masori, Tumikin Shadow, Ancestral, Saturated Heart, and niche weapons and special attack items before Torva. The reason for this is that full Torva armor grants a total of 18 strength bonus for the helmet, chest, and leg slot. Compare that to a Justicia Face Guard, Bandus Chestplate, and Tacits, we are looking at a 12 strength bonus in the same slots. If you pair that up with the newest best in slot ring for melee, the Ultor Ring, which provides a plus 12 strength bonus alone, and at a much humbler price of 136 million at the time of making this video, it will be a much smarter choice before you drop money on full Torva. So, save that cash and get that expensive armor at the very end. We are moving on to ranged armor, and I will start with a set of items that pretty much inspired this whole video. Full Armadil armor is now absolute dead content for main accounts, thanks to the release of Masori. Now, let me explain. Before the Tombs of a Mascot, Armadil armor was best in slot, exclusively because it had the highest offensive range stats in the game. But if you look at it, there wasn't that much of a difference between that and items like Carol or Full Blessed Dragon Hide. Thanks to Full Masori, which provides ranged strength in the head, chest, and legs a lot, Armadil is now only useful for Ironmen looking to get Armadil components to fortify their Masori armor coming from TOA. Instead of Armadil, you should 100% stick to Blessed Dragon Hide until you're able to afford a Twisted Bow, and then fortify Masori. This would be the only item in the list I would absolutely say that if you see a main account wearing full armadil, you are legally allowed to make fun of them. Another item that deserves to be thrown in the garbage as its own is the armadil crossbow. Did you know that this item is dropped by Zeliana because technically it was stolen from the armadil forces? Oh, and because without it, the Ceradom in general would only have the Ceradom in hilt to carry the loot table. At a little over 50 million GP, the only reason why it's so expensive is because it's needed to make the Zerad crossbow along a Nihil horn. And the Zerosian crossbow is actually useful not only because of the special attack. The item you should be using instead is a dragon crossbow, which sits at a humble 1.6 million GB. And before you say anything, the Armadil crossbow special attack does not even justify the price. It doubles your accuracy as well as the chance of proccing both special effects, and on paper this doesn't sound bad, but more often than not, it's still going to fail miserably. Avoid this item like the plague, and stick to a dragon crossbow until your next upgrade, like a bofa, or a crystal armor. A pretty expensive item I would say is a little overrated is the archer's ring. I honestly have no idea why it has remained fairly expensive over the years, but with the recent release of the venator ring coming from the leviathan, it at least has a use to break it down into the archer icon to turn it into the best in slot ring for range. Also, because the Dagonaut Kings are not extremely popular, so it will most likely keep its price point for a while. Now, what happens if you don't have the money to buy a Venator Ring? Well, we have so many more options for useful rings like a Lightbearer for more specials on the Blowpipe, a Ring of Suffering for more defensive and prayer stats, a Ring of the Gods for more prayer and the Holy Wrench passive effects, and if you're dirt poor, even an Explorer's Ring might be a good option. Even after imbuing it at the Nightmare Zone or other places, the Archer's Ring is now an item you should definitely skip and use those 4 mil GP somewhere else. The last item for the range slot now falls in the category of delaying it as much as possible, and it is a pair of Pegasian Boots. They sit at a little bit over 30 million GP, and reach the peak of 42 mil at the beginning of 2023. The only reason for this is because to make them, you need both a Pegasian Crystal for Cerberus, and a pair of Ranger Boots from Medium Clues. Being the most sought-after item in the medium casket roll, Pegasian Boots will always keep their high price simply because of the items needed to make them. Looking at these stats, all you get are some defensive capabilities and a weird plus a 12 boost to your ranged accuracy. Your second best option would be a pair of Blessed Dragonite Boots which offer a plus 7 boost in the same category. If you ask me, 30 million GP is not worth this insignificant boost, so a pair of Pegasian Boots should be your absolute last purchase on your way to best in slot ranged after things like Atibo, Masori, Anguish, and Zerid Vambraces. I would even say Torva is a smarter decision for melee compared to Pegasians for ranged, but we are looking at a 1.1 billion GP difference. We are moving on to magic, and the first set of items you should avoid are Wand. These items come from the Mage Training Arena, and remain relatively expensive for what they do because MTA is only done by people looking to get over the hard Lumbridge Diary to unlock those bones to peaches. It is absolutely not a good idea to get any of them because, just like Pegasians, the price doesn't really justify the bonus. The Beginner, Apprentice, and the Teacher ones are quite literally dead content, as you're better off using an elemental battle staff to save on runes. 
As for the Master Wand, you'll need 60 magic to equip it, which is a lot higher than the Humble Ancient Staff at only a fraction of the cost. The Master Wand should only be obtained by Ironman accounts looking to combine said item with a Kodai Insignia for the quote-unquote best-in-slot wand weapon in the game, the Kodai Wand. And speak of the devil, the Kodai Wand is next on the list. Now, some of you may flame me for it because the Kodai is useful at places like the Inferno, TOB, or bursting and barraging through Slayer, but boys and girls, we have more alternatives for it. The reason why it's so expensive is because the Kodai Insignia is a mega rare drop from Chambers, and it's not even one of the best drops on the table. It has also lost a little bit of popularity thanks to the Divine Brun Pouch, since you can just bring Water Runes uh, as your fourth rune slot for spells at places like the Inferno. An obvious alternative to the Kodai Wand is a Nightmare Staff, and you don't even need to attach an orb to it. Despite having 12 less accuracy and damage, the Nightmare Staff provides the same plus 15% magic damage bonus, and can also autocast ancient magic spells. The Kodai Wand sits at 95 million GP, and the Nightmare Staff at nearly a fourth of the cost at 25 million GP as of the time of making this video. The Nightmare Staff should definitely be what you stick to, along with the Toxic Trident, although you can afford a Sanguinacy Staff, or even better, a Tumic and Shadow. When it comes to magic, we have a lot of great armor sets, but one set of items that you should always skip on, even if you have the level for it, is Full Enchanted. And I don't even blame you if you have never heard of this item, because they are quite literally garbage and only worn by Giga Champions. The Enchanted set is available at level 40 magic and the 20 defense, and they come from hard caskets if players are lucky to receive a piece after completing a hard clue scroll. Now, you know what else you are able to wear at 40 magic and the 20 defense? Well, any of the mystic items available in four different colors. Of course, they have different price points, but the blue set is the cheapest one, and even cheaper than Enchanted even if you include gloves and boots. Other than collection log enthusiasts, the purple robes are the pure definition of dead content in old school RuneScape and should be skipped 100% of the time. On the same note, we are going to put full infinity on Blast. This has one thing in common with some of the previous items, and it is that they also come from the Mage Training Arena. Because of this, they suffer the same fate. Interesting enough items that become dead content because of the activity they come from, and we have better alternatives before and after you are able to wear them. The whole set costs nearly 7 million GP as of the time of making this video, and you need 50 magic and the 20 defense to equip it. You won't spend as many hours getting from 50 to 60, and this is where you have items such as Blood Bark at your disposal, which are astronomically cheaper. Hell, I would even stick to Full Mystic because of the negligible difference in stats. At level 70, you have Aram and Dakonhai, making Full Infinity absolute dead content. Except maybe for the boots which are needed to make Eternal Boots with an Eternal Crystal from servers. The last item in the magic category is the Seer's Ring. And just like the Archer's Ring, even when imbued, it doesn't even justify the price point despite being severely cheaper compared to the other Dagonaut King's uniques. Now, the item has seen an increase in popularity because it's needed to make the Magus Ring, which is a new best in slot magic thanks to the release of Desert Treasure 2. On its own though, it's going to be a pretty useless purchase compared to other items. If you look at the ring slot table for magic bonuses, we don't really have a lot to work with. The Seer's Ring provides a plus 6 magic accuracy, whereas a Ring of Shadows, a Beacon Ring and a Lunar Ring provide plus 5, 2 and a 2 magic bonus respectively. And let me tell you, magic is already pretty busted, so these numbers mean quite literally nothing. You could go by with an imbued Seer's Ring for a little bit, but honestly, I would rock either a Brimstone Ring which is useful for all 3 combat styles, or even an Explorer's Ring if you don't have a ton of cash. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the final part of the video, and this one might sound silly, but do not, I repeat, do not buy 3rd Age items under any circumstance. All of these are mega rare items coming from Clue Scrolls, and the only reason why they're so expensive is simply because of how rare they are. The only useful item was a Third Age Bow, up until the release of the Venator Bow, as Barbarian Assault Enjoyers swapped to it as a much better alternative. The only reason why you would ever want any of these items is if you have absolutely every single combat and niche item you would ever want. And of course, if you have all of your viable skills up to 99 or even 200 million experience. Third Age items are simply cosmetic items whose purpose is to show wealth, or that you fell for the trap of purchasing an expensive item, thinking it would be useful for your adventures. Boys and girls of all ages, we made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did and want a chance to win the bond, make sure to tell me what you think is a useless item or set of items in the comments below. If you do, include the letters RSN in your comments, along with your RuneScape username. We will pick a winner randomly on Friday, and I will add you to coordinate the drop. 
I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members. You have no idea how much your extra support means to me, and I hope to continue providing entertaining and helpful videos in the future. If you want to help out this project monetarily, click the join button below to see all the cool perks you can get in the channel and the live stream for a monthly subscription. In the next one, I have a fun pet hunting video for you, as we will see my rapidly decline in mental health when going for the phantom musk pets, as well as how much money I made from it. Until then, I hope you have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Pa 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 pa, and peace.